Okay, so we're going to try and set up a volume light technique using mental ray. And this is pretty easy to do. It's a good effect for realistic type lights or a fluorescent light bulb. And we're going to just set up a, a simple scene to work with here. Just set up a plane and you can hold X to snap to point. You can hold shift and X on your sphere and that'll make it so that it is set directly on the origin there rather than centered in the origin. And this is this is probably a little bit big, so we'll move we'll move the pivot down to the bottom holding D and then V and snap it right to that point right there in the middle. You hold D, V, and then the middle mouse button. And then you can move it to that point. And you can move it to any of the points here. And then we'll shrink it down and it'll stay right on that plane. Now before we apply a material we have to go to our plugin manager and make sure that myatomer.mll is actually enabled. Otherwise mental ray won't show up as one of our renderers. Then we're going to want to go here and assign new material. Hold down right click, assign new material. And Mia Material X. And we'll just set it to a matte finish. And we'll just completely replace that material and change its color to how about a green. And then we'll go to our Hypershade editor. And we'll use a light surface. Now to find this you can just type in light right here and then it's right at the top, Mia Light Surface. And you're going to hold down the middle mouse button on this right arrow here and then drag it over to, the, to this arrow right here and select additional color. And that's going to make it so that the color that we applied to this one really doesn't matter. That's just what the object will look like if it's not glowing. And we'll have to change the color here. We'll put it to that same color so it doesn't really matter. And we'll put Final Gathering Contribution up to 2 and then we'll go to our render settings we'll change it to mental ray we'll go to our quality here and then change it to production I usually do this for low resolution previews because my computer is fast enough to render it without there being a problem and then we'll make sure final gathering is checked on and then we'll render it and you can see we get a nice we get a nice glow effect around this and that works pretty good because it actually responds with other objects in the scene. And we'll just compare this to other glow effects that you get with different Maya materials. Assign the material. We'll just do a Lambert with this one. And with Lambert you can apply the same color and then go to special effects and apply some glow intensity. And this you see you get your glows kind of right off the surface and it doesn't really react with anything in the scene. We'll put this all the way up to one and re-render it. And that's kind of you see the one on the left's better for if you're trying to set up realistic scenes. Maybe if you're trying to do something um, astronomy based or cartoony here, this might work out better for you. Um, it definitely renders a little bit faster because it doesn't render the light. It just adds it on a, after the fact, as soon as the frame's rendered. It'll just put the glow right on top of it. And then we can just, if we add other objects here, we'll just add a cube and we'll redo our material setup but with a different light this time and we'll see how it works together. And we'll do the same thing here, matte finish. And we'll go to our hypershade. And you see you, we've got these ones right here. We'll just ignore these for now. We'll move this one right here. And another light surface. We should already have it pulled up there on the left. And we'll just attach it to additional color again. And this time we'll have it be red. And we'll final gathering contribution, we'll put up to four. And we can render that. And you can see they don't really, you can't see it very well how they react there. It's more of an overlapping look. Change intensity to three maybe. That's a little bit bright. And we can just take this out of the scene. And maybe we want a better looking cube for this render. We'll just go to Edit Mesh and we'll bevel the edges. Put the offset down to 0 0.05. Segments up to 3. And you'll see it doesn't really cut off so much as it kind of just comes together and fades together here. And you're still getting that same look when, they, when the glows overlap. You're still getting it to react with the other objects. We could put something here in the middle like a, a cylinder, hit space to change views, and then move the mouse over the view that you want to use. 
and hit space again. Change radius here to 0 0.05, 0 0.5. Now we'll just render this. And you see you get your green on one side, you get your red on the other side. And I'll just up the resolution here a little bit so that we can see it better. Do a 2K square. And you can already see right here that I'm getting great shadow and the light's working great. Mental Ray's great for this. Um, another problem with the Lambert special effect, the glow with the Lambert, is that it flickers. It tends to flicker if you render it with Mental Ray. So you have to try and avoid that. But if there's no objects nearby, for instance, if I delete this plane right here, or actually I'll just hide it, Control H, and I'll hide this. and then I render it. You see there's no glow. There's no glow that's visible. So if you were to attach this glow to an object that's not necessarily on anything, it's floating around in space, you wouldn't be able to see any of this effect. And that's all for this tutorial.